Who reads me up? Here you go. I'm drinking again. Oh, that's better. That's better. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And they said, you're right, Lee. He said, I guess a bit more. So you drink a bit more. And uh, he said, how do you feel now? He said, oh, I feel good now. And then all of a sudden he stood up. It wasn't a wombat at all. It was Miami, the, the creator, pretending to be a wombat to see who'd help him. And he said, I've been laying here to see who helped me. He said, heaps have gone past me and no one's ever stopped to help. But you two have. And, and your friend over there in the hollow log was all helping today. And then, uh, and then he said, well, hang on, where's all your babies? And he said, we had to take them over there because we couldn't do all these things without and all their babies. He said, well, from now on, you don't have to hold your babies anymore because they give you all a pouch. He said, and that's why all the marsupials in Australia have got pouches to carry their babies in so they've got their hands free to help Mr Wombat and <laughs> give him a drink of water. <laughs> So, so that's uh, yeah, that kind of yeah. And the other animals, well, they didn't get one because they were too stupid to help him. <laughs> and in the mass it was the other. Yeah. And uh, yeah, these stories have been passed down thousands of years. And, yeah, you wouldn't know, wouldn't know how long ago they were sort of first came about. Because it's hard, no one can realise. Uh, too many people believe in evolution these days and they, and they can't stop and think for a minute. It's impossible, evolution. You can evolution within a species, but not, they can't change. And uh, I was watching uh, David Attenborough the other night and I always had a lot of respect for him, and I still have, but he said uh, it was about the hummingbirds. And he said, these birds, I've got to drink so many litres of, of, of nectar every day to survive, to live. And he said, and, uh, they've evolved this way. Now, he should have known then, as soon as he said that, how can, they've got to have all that nectar every week, every day. Now, how, how can they wait till their beak grows that long to, to get into the thing? And how do they fly backwards? No other bird will fly backwards. Somebody had to make that, program that, and I might, you probably think I'm stupid, but it's, it's, it's true because they can't last a day without getting a drink. Now, how did they get to get that stage? They couldn't. They had to be made straight away to go and get that drink. And that's, that's just my idea anyway. And that's, it's, it's, uh, it's like, all the creatures that were made, <coughs> Man have tried to cross them and make new ones for years and years, but it never worked. They cross a horse with a donkey and they get a mule. The mule can't breathe, that's it, that's the finish. Because Miami says, hands off, I'm the creator, not you. You can't make a new animal, I can only do that. And then they cross sheep with goats and they call them a geep and they didn't breed. <laughs> and they, all these things, they tried everything. Canaries with finches and everything, and they get a mule every time. They can't, no one can make a new animal because there's only one person that can make them. Now that's, that's, and because of that, that's why I, know, I believe in it, because no one can tell me a, di a different, different story. But no one can show me anything different. So, I don't know what you reckon. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's what I believe. That's what all the Aboriginal people have Known that for thousands of years, they, they, they didn't. There was no such thing as evolution in them because they knew that there was a creator that made all these things. Well, you don't have to look around all these different sorts of trees. There's millions of different sorts of trees. Why? Well, there's so many different sorts. I need about two or three sorts because every tree and every animal has got a job to do on that on, on that thing. You know, there's, there's gum trees for the for the possums and the birds and everything to live in. And then you've got a white ant that he made to hollow out the tree to make the hollows for the animals to live in. But the crew don't die. He don't, the white ant won't kill the tree, he only just shoots the middle out. And then there's a home that makes homes for all the animals. So it all sort of ties up if you think about it. But yeah, don't want to be crazy thinking about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, then that's how, that's how come 
a lot of the stories in there, in there uh, Mom's sort of the stories sort of that to me they all make sense, you know. It's, when you read those ones of you any of you just got that with the book or what wrote about the animals. No. But when you read them stories you you say, Oh that's right. Because there's, there's up here you've got magpies with black backs and down when they get down further they've all got white backs. And a woman in uh, Griffith University, which I thought was Griffith but it's up in Brisbane, she she's been twenty seven years no, it'll be twenty nine years now. Because it was two years ago when I found out about it. 29 years studying magpies to work out how come they've got black backs here and white backs there and, and, and why, why they just stop her there and the white backs start there. She, she's been 29 years we're trying to work out how it comes. And I've, I've got the stories in my book, but she wouldn't believe that. Because she's, uh, she, has, she still hasn't got an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else do you want to know? Did you tell that story? Hey? Did you tell the story about the why the magpies have the different coloured backs? It's a good story. Well, there's kids here. <laughs> 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 the censored version. Now, what happened? What happened? Thousands of years ago, the Penguin people, one family had twins, two boys, and a little bugger, they were running around causing trouble everywhere, but they never got into trouble because as soon as they'd done something and someone was after them, they'd both run to somewhere and run around like that and then they'd go, well, which one was it? Because they both looked the same. So they couldn't hit them, hit them. they said, we can't hit them both because we're going to hit the one that didn't do it, you know? So that's how they got away with this stuff anyway. The, the tribe, they got sick of all this stuff, it's caused too much trouble. So they went to the chief one night and he said, listen, these kids, these twins, they're causing a lot of trouble. And we've got to, how yeah, are we going to do it? He said, oh, he said, I'll have a meeting with the elders and come back tomorrow and we'll work something out. So they come back the next morning and uh, the chief said, right, he says, bring the two sets of parents here. And uh, the parents came, and uh, the mother and the father, rather. And, uh, he said, oh, there's too much trouble happening in the tribe. He said, the only way we can fix it, he said, one of those twins has got to get painted with white ochre on his back every every morning. As soon as he wakes up the one, got to be painted with white all down his back. Okay. So they've done that. And then the kids never got into trouble anymore because everyone knew which one was which. So they'd, they'd bugger them up. They couldn't, couldn't do the mischief. Anyway... <laughs> And they grew up, when they grew up, they were sort of young fellows. And in, they met, met up with this other tribe, uh, the Jaray tribe from over Bendigo way, and they had a crawberry there one night. And they were all sitting around the old, oldies. And they said, oh, here's, here's the big out here. And uh, over here, the uh, Bendigo mob, they said, oh, we've got two bloody girl twins. He said, Jesus, the trouble, of course. And they said, oh, we, we, could, we could fix that. He said, all you've got to do is paint one of them with white on, it, on her back and then everyone will know who's who and they can't get away with all these tricks. So they, they, they've done it too. And then anyway, years later they met up again and by this time the boys are big and the girls are big and, uh, and the boys looked at them and they said, gee, here, here, go on, they're here, they? And the girls liked the boys too and they so they went and seen the, the chief and said, you know, can we marry up with them once? And, and the chief said, oh, he said, ah, it'd be double trouble. <laughs> We've had enough trouble now with you fellas. But anyway, and then another, another elder says, no, 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 no. He said, if they get married, our tribes will be both strong because that'll bring both tribes together. The girls from there and the boys from here. Oh, yeah. Well, and he said, well, they've still got to be painted. We're not going to take the risk of them, you know, playing up because they've always been playing up. Anyway, so they, the, the girls were still painted, one painted girl and one boy painted. Anyway, so that was all right. Everything went quite quiet for a while. And one day a messenger came in to the chief. He said, hey, chief, this is, uh, those twins are all, those two lots of twins are at it again. And he said, oh, what are, what are they doing? 
He said, well, they camp over near Bendigo at a place called Goolong. And he said, they camp there. He said, they just keep swapping partners all the time. <laughs>